This is going to be Daniel chapter 5, and we're going to look at what is the quickest way to hell. We know that the thing that sends a man to hell is rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, there are some things that will speed up the process on his road to damnation. And number one, one of the quickest ways to hell is to party like a rock star. Daniel 5.1 says, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. So Belshazzar is a party, party animal. He is one of those people who no matter how old they get, they continue to act like a teenager. He is only concerned with fulfilling the desires of the flesh. He wants to eat, drink, and be merry. He wants to be given to much wine. And Proverbs 20 and verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. And then Romans 8, 13 says, For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And this is true for saved and lost people alike. If you live after the flesh, doing all the wicked things that the flesh wants, then you'll take yourself to an early grave. Now, lost people live for the flesh, but the more they live for the flesh, the harder of a time they're going to have and the quicker they're going to die. And a safe person who lives for the flesh instead of living for the spirit, they're just going to have a horrible time and they're going to die early. And if you're lost, you'll take yourself to hell quicker. It will definitely give you a boost and exceptions like Hugh Hefner doesn't overthrow the rule. Or some sinner, there's some sinners who live to be a hundred years old, but that, those are the exceptions to the rule. And the exceptions don't overthrow the rule, they prove the rule. Psalms 55, 23 says, But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. And now Daniel 5, 2, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels, which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. So parties with alcohol should be avoided, even if it is a work party, a Christmas party, or birthday party, or whatever. Even if you don't have a temptation to drink, others will peer pressure you into drinking. And these parties like Belshazzar's having, where men drink and dance, is nothing but stupidity and giving in to fleshly appetites. Isaiah 22.13 says, And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink. For tomorrow we shall die. And that is the philosophy of many lost people. But First Timothy 5, 6 says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Parties where men drink and touch women that they're not married to is a good jump start to an early grave. Uh, consider these things. If you don't drink alcohol, then don't risk getting the diseases that accompany alcohol. You won't have to worry about those, those diseases as much as you would if you didn't drink. If you don't fornicate with these wicked women and hang around the bars and parties where they're at, then you don't risk getting sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, you avoid a lot of diseases and sicknesses by not committing these certain sins. And if there is a ticker somewhere that shows how many minutes you have left before you leave this world, those diseases will definitely take time off of that clock. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 2 says, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. And the bars and wild parties aren't a good place to find a mate. 
you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, as they say. Uh, you can't turn a drunk bum into a good father and husband. And the exceptions don't overthrow the rule. Uh, people who party and drink and fornicate and listen to the same music that the kids do seem to never grow up. And I know countless of 30 and 40 year olds who act just like they did when they were a teenager. They never grew up. And this is because they fail to go through with the Bible command, which says to put away childish things. They just keep the childish things, and it just makes them stay acting like they're a teenager. Daniel 5.3 says, Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. Notice they are involving the things of God in their good time. The country singers did the same thing. The wicked country music singer Kenny Chesney will sing about being under hellfire and brimstone preaching one minute and be talking about a keg in the closet the next minute. And a lyric from his song is, I learned in Sunday school who made the moonshine. And I also know who makes the moonshine too. So he's referring to alcohol right after referring to God as the creator. And the country music crowd loves to mix wickedness with things that are good and right, which makes it worse. Uh, rappers like to mix the things of God in with their wickedness, or at least reference the things of God with their wicked lyrics. Kanye West has a song supposedly exalting the Lord Jesus Christ, yet he has Jesus Christ looking like a strung-out hippie in the video, and he also says the F word and everything else. And it is because devil-possessed men are obsessed with God. Even though these men are devil-possessed, they're still obsessed with the Lord Jesus Christ, just like the maniac of Gadara. And Daniel 5, 4 says, They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. And it hasn't changed even thousands of years later. Men still worship the same gods, and it is still gods of silver and gold. Uh, Google the iPhone colors and you'll see. And men still get together to celebrate false gods, like at Comic-Con. Uh, look like movie screenings, like sports games. And rich politicians still have drunken parties that involve sex perversion. And this is done all for blackmail. And they get the men drunk and take pictures of them committing sinful acts for blackmail. And Habakkuk 2.15 says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink that puttest the bottle to him that they may look on your nakedness. And things haven't changed. The Bible is still so true even thousands of years after the men pinned it down. But number one, the quickest way to hell, party like a rock star. Stay in rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ and then just party and live for the flesh. And number two, pass on the word of God. Belshazzar has heard about God from Nebuchadnezzar and heard about the three Hebrew boys being delivered, and yet he has passed on the things of God. And if you want to jump start your death, go directly contrary from the way the Bible says to go. And Jesus talks about going the narrow way, yet people choose the broad way to hell. Daniel 5, 5 says, In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. And here Belshazzar obviously doesn't understand the handwriting on the wall. And Daniel 5, 6, the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him. So that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. And he is getting so scared that his knees knocked, as they say. He probably dropped and shattered his beard. And this is a picture of how God will try to shake up the sinner right in the midst of his sinful lifestyle. Now Belshazzar does look into the words of God. He's going to try to get it figured out what it says. 
However, he goes to the wrong place. And how many people do you know who get sick of their sin because God shook the world and scares them a bit, maybe through a car wreck or death of a, fam of a family member, but they go to the wrong place for spiritual advice, maybe to a televangelist or a contemporary megachurch pastor or a oneness Pentecostal or a works-based salvationist or some worldly counselor. And that is exactly what Belshazzar does. He has definitely heard of Daniel, but he doesn't go to the man of God. He goes to the world to get an answer for the handwriting on the wall. And that brings us to our next point. What's the quickest way to hell? Play with unclean spirits. Daniel 5, 7 says, The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. And this is like Justin Bieber going to the wicked contemporary Hillsong pastor, Carl Lentz, or like Jay-Z and Hillary Clinton seeking out help from the witch who does the spirit cooking stuff. Uh, they don't have any sense to realize that there is a God in heaven who can give them an answer. The God in heaven could have gave Belshazzar an answer, but instead he's going to the astrologers and the soothsayers. Uh, Daniel 5, 8 says, Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. So the devil's men are always inferior to God's men. They don't know the interpretation. And of course they can't tell what the writing is. They don't understand the things of God. Just like false teachers and pastors today don't understand the things of God. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And many people are led by men who can't shed light on the scriptures because God hasn't given them any light on the scriptures. Uh, they have messed up their minds to the word of God, but correcting it and not studying it or have led them to just mess up the word of God so bad by overly dividing it or under dividing it. They've not studied to show themselves approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And they've led many people astray and loving the pleasures of the world more than the riches of Jesus Christ have got them messed up on the word of God. And then they've in turn messed up other people. And the wicked men in this story can't give the interpretation. This is because interpretations belong to God. And Second Peter 1.20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. The Bible is self-interpreting. And if you want to know something, then God has to let you know it. And the greatest teacher in the history of Christianity couldn't get you to understand the Bible unless God allowed you to understand what he was teaching you. Daniel 5, 9, Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in, in him, and his lords were astonished, or astonished. He actually thought they could help. And this is what happens when you seek the answers from the sinful world. If you're lost and you want to kickstart your way to hell, then play with unclean spirits and the occult, just like Belshazzar does here. Now, Belshazzar is going to get some good advice from the queen, who is his mother or grandmother. And Daniel 5.10-14 through 14 says, Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the king spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers, for as much as an excellent spirit of knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts, 
were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Okay, now notice he calls it the spirit of the gods. He says the spirit of the gods is in Daniel. And this is because he is a polytheist, meaning he believes in multiple gods. He doesn't have any sense. But yet he knows Daniel has something in him that others don't have. He has the Holy Spirit in him and not just on him. And many people teach that the Old Testament saints didn't have the Holy Spirit in them, but just on them. However, there's verses that show, like this one, that the Holy Spirit was in some of them. But Belshazzar says light, understanding, and wisdom is found in Daniel. And if you look at Job 32, 8, it says, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Proverbs 2, 6 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Psalms 119, 130, The entrance of thy words giveth light it giveth understanding unto the simple so god is the one who gives wisdom knowledge and understanding if you want wisdom knowledge and understanding you're going to have to open the book god's words and read it the entrance of thy words giveth light it giveth understanding unto the simple so daniel has wisdom light and understanding because he is hooked up with the right god and you don't get those things from playing with unclean spirits. You get it from praying and reading the book. Uh, Daniel 5.15 And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And once again, God's men out... Once again, God's men... Outdo the devil's men. Daniel outdoes the astrologers, Chaldean soothsayers. And this is like this all throughout the Bible. God's men outdo the magicians. Uh, Moses outdid the magicians. Uh, the disciples outdo Simon the sorcerer. But moving on to our next point, what's the quickest way to hell? Reject Jesus Christ and put your mind on the temporal instead of the eternal. So party like a rock star and put your mind on the temporal instead of the eternal. Remember how Belshazzar was partying and giving into his fleshy appetites? This is because his mind was on the temporal and not on the eternal. If you want a way to, if you want a quick way to hell, then stay in rejection of Jesus Christ and don't even consider the afterlife. There are atheists and people who just live for a thrill and for the cares of this world and don't even give God in eternity a second thought. And that's dangerous. You can you see these people who do dangerous stuff and drive like a maniac and do big handstands on the sides of skyscrapers and they aren't thinking about hell or eternity. They seek the thrills of this life, and they want to think about the clothes and the jewelry and the smartphones, not the things of God. And that is how Belshazzar is. Daniel five fifteen through 16 says, And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Notice he is offering him material things to someone who is concerned with eternal things. 
And since Daniel's just concerned with eternal things, look at his response in Daniel 5.17. He says, Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give the rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. Daniel is like, I don't need that stuff. I have eternal things waiting. And that is the way we should be when the world offers us all that stuff that we see. If you live for God now, then you'll get a white robe and precious stones, gold and silver, and all those good things later. The devil offered Jesus Christ all the kingdoms of the world if he would worship him. But Jesus declined. He was going to get it all anyway. Uh, you're going to get all this good stuff anyway. Just don't get it right now. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. So if you want to jumpstart your way to hell, reject Jesus Christ, and put your mind on temporal things instead of eternal things. And next, pay no attention to the failures of your fathers. Daniel 5:18 through 21 says, O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deep posed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses yet they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high god ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will uh, nebuchadnezzar had a pride problem and Belshazzar knew what would, what had happened to his grandfather, yet he rejected the truth anyway. And the experience of others is the best teacher because you can learn from their mistakes and not have the wounds of going through it yourself. Now learn from your parents' mistakes. Don't make the same mistakes that they made. Uh, Christians should learn from the mistakes of other Christians and try not to make the same mistakes that they did. Uh, if someone in your family rejects the Lord Jesus Christ and does all these things that I've mentioned, learn from their mistakes. If they've died and gone died and gone to hell, you don't have to die and go to hell. Sometimes God warns us through the downfall of others. Uh, when you see your parent die because of alcohol, have some sense and don't drink alcohol. When you see your parents or someone else die because of an STD, then quit committing fornication. If you see a family member die and go to hell because they rejected Jesus Christ, then don't reject Jesus Christ. Uh, God warns us in his word. He warns us through common sense, if you have it, and through the experience of others. If you see somebody who lived for the flesh their whole life and then see them die, that ought to remind you that you're not going to live forever and you are going to die. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Uh, it says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor. It says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You're going to die. You're going to face judgment. You're going to go to heaven or hell. If you want to go to heaven, then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't stay in rejection of the gospel. And next we see that pride goeth before destruction. Want to go to hell faster? Reject Jesus Christ and stay in your pride. Pride goeth before destruction. Daniel 5.22 says, And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. He had a pride problem. Luke 14.11 says, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And the Bible says, He that thinketh himself to be something when he is nothing deceiveth himself. And God is looking for people who are willing to be nobodies for Him. Are you willing to be a nobody for the Lord Jesus Christ? Most people are looking for acceptance here in this earth. They want to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. 
Uh, they don't want to take up their cross and follow Jesus Christ. Matthew sixteen twenty five says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And Daniel five twenty three says, But hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not nor hear nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Belshazzar lifted up himself against the Lord of heaven, and that is the definition of stupidity. Uh, you can't win against God. Acts 5, 38 and 39 says, And now I say unto you, Refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Less happily if you be found even to fight against God. You can't fight God. The Bible says in Exodus that the Lord is a man of war. He made you and he can break you. Daniel five twenty four through 29 says, Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many tickle you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tickled, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, the kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Although Daniel didn't say he would take the gifts... He got them anyway. He gave the king the interpretation of the handwriting on the wall because God gave it to him. And that reminds me how when you go through this life serving God, not trying to be accepted by the world and not trying to get rich down here, God ends up dropping money and food and clothes in your lap anyway. 1 Timothy 6, 8 says, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Daniel 5.30 in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. Want a quick way to hell? Stay in your pride. That's what Belshazzar did. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall, says Proverbs sixteen eighteen. And some people won't get saved because they have too much pride, too much stuff, too much material things. They say, I don't need a God to lean on. That's for weak people. And it's stupidity to reject Jesus Christ. You have a pride problem. Daniel 5.31 says, And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. So about 62 years old. And all that stuff that you have accumulated and are hoarding in your house will go to somebody else when you die and go to hell. Just like Belshazzar's things did. All that stuff Belshazzar had went to Darius. Uh, mate material things don't satisfy. And all that stuff you worked for would just be left to somebody else. And who knows what they will do with it. Ecclesiastes 2, 18 and 19 says, Yea, I hated all of my labor which I had taken under the sun. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun, this also is vanity.